Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. Today's episode of the Mike O'Mara Show is brought to you by our bonus packages. Please go to MikeO'MaraShow.com and click on the bonus banner. You'll get access to all of our bonus content, and even better, you'll be helping out TMOS. So please, quit sucking, and we thank you. Available on demand every day in iTunes and the Google Play Store and around the world on MikeO'MaraShow.com. What more can we do for you? It's the Mike O'Mara Show. Hello? Hey? Bulb? Don't feel like being funny, Rob. <laughs> Would you like to explain to our listeners what's going on in I will, detail? I will explain. Yes, we had a, um, a slightly truncated early start today, 8.30, that we decided on last night. Text went out at... Yeah, explain it for people that might not know, that might actually be listening. All right. It's good we, practice for you. Uh, explain how we... Uh, the, the inner workings of the way we do the program. Well, we should, we should first explain that we start every day at 9. That is our target start. Nine that is when Eastern we normally time. start, but right, it varies right. widely. It can. It can. And so last night at uh, 6.03 p.m., you sent out a text. Uh, just an FYI, 8.30 a.m. start tomorrow, which is no big deal. We do this all the time. Fridays, it's especially common. And so Maddie and uh, Pony, how does uh, Rob sound right now? Just out of curiosity. Oh, Rob, Rob sounding good on our end. Just checking. Okay. First thing so, runs the board is not there. <laughs> We're going to get to that. And so <laughs> immediately to the text, uh, I reply, Maddie replies, Matt replies, you reply that it's all good. I did not notice the fact that Oscar did not reply. Right, I'm going to take over because you're okay. nervous and, and shaky. So let me uh, explain how this works. So we have protocols now based on the absolute continual fucking up of our very small little operations. Uh, protocols that are put in place so that we can uh, check, double check, and triple check uh, to make sure. Now, looking back, I believe it was you or Pony or someone who was responsible for making sure, because we send messages to each other when right. we're going to change the time. Now, the 8.30 start, I believe I mentioned early in the week, but I figured everybody forgot, which they did, because that's the way it works. Uh, at 6.03 p.m. Uh, yesterday evening, mm -hmm. I sent out just an FI FYI, 8.30 a.m. start tomorrow. And uh, I love the fact that everybody sends out a little emoji. It's our little joke right. that we know we've acknowledged it. This is the first problem. Rob responds with, gotcha. That's not the way it's done. It's normally not done like that. And I, I had a little tiny issue of this is the way 2021 is rolling because we, we normally, it's an emoji. That's what, now the, the, the good news is Rob later in the thread puts out an emoji. I caught which myself. Which is fine. I caught myself. I was in the middle of but something you when were, that came out. Yeah, but that, that, that's all right. That's okay, but that's where we are. That's where we are now. Just, you know, routines are routines for that reason. So right, that right. protocols, you know, you check. Yeah. When you get on the plane, you, uh, you you make sure that the tanks are filled up. You make sure the right. flaps are working, you know, everything. But it's routine. So, you know, as long as you, before you take off, you make sure the flaps are working, we're okay with that. Right. So we get a response from uh, Rob, gotcha. And then a Christmas tree. Maddie with a thumbs up. Pony with a dog bone. Very funny. And I sent a bikini out to everybody. Yes. Even though I had initiated the, uh, the response. Then I just uh, turned my phone off and went on with my evening. And we didn't get a response from right. the other guy. Mm -hmm. uh, that's on me, I think. I should have. That I is on you. Through. Because, that's, because that. that's your job. Right. Uh, that uh, you're supposed to check to see. That everybody has gotten it and then follow up. So we didn't. When did we know? We knew at approximately 830 this morning. Right. That's when we double checked. And I said to you, I said, did Oscar respond? No, he didn't. Oh, Oscar's calling. So, hold on. Hold on. Oh, he's calling. Good. Yeah. Okay. Put him on speaker. Hold on a second, Oscar. Hello. There's no 830 start today. We talked about it. We said, no, we'll keep it the same. Nine. But there was no. a text that went out last night. Did you confirm with me? I did not, and I, I, that is on me. What the fuck, man? <laughs> he's on the <laughs> tell me he's on the air. You're on the air. I'm fine. Uh, this makes no sense. What's where? where uh, what, what's his? What's his ETA? 
What's your ETA? I mean, I'm I'm at home. I can get in the car and drive up, but I don't appreciate yeah. writing what my ETA is when I wasn't notified that there was or confirmed that was notification of an early start. Well, well there was a, there was a text we're, we're, last night. Okay, what is the protocol? The protocol is that I should have followed up on the text. Okay, stop doing your best and start doing my best, please. <laughs> Okay. Tell him to get. All right. Let me talk to him. Can I? All right. Can, can, I'll see you soon. Let's, let, let's call. Let's. We'll call. Yes. Tell him we're calling him on the show. We're going to call you on the show in one sec. Hold on. Stand by, Oscar. All right. Bye. 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 Dial him up, Maddie, if you would. I have to do his second. best. Well, you, you, now you see that's snarky. That's snarky because you don't give a shit. No, I do give you a don't. shit. No, no, no. That's a that's a comment from a guy that needs to have his ass kicked. Because that's the way it always is here. We just like, yeah, that is your job. And you're trying to indicate to the listeners that it's not. It's no, it no. your job. You know that. I, I you're said, the guy. I, I already said this it's is It's a on terrible me. position with a man who is perpetually tardy, but, you know, that's no, but why I, we do it. From the front of this, I said this is my fault. This is on me. Right. But I would have loved if he had, you know, seen the text last night. I'm sorry that I did not see that he did not reply to the text. Hello. Hello. Hi, Mike. Uh, Good morning. Yes, this uh, this is bu- this is a uh, plenty of blame to go around. Uh, you know, we all can, uh, but we do have a protocol in place, and the uh, protocol we didn't know until eight thirty, and uh, and it's very very uh, frustrating. Very yeah, very clearly, frustrating. You know, I, it is. I, I, it is. You know, I love doing the show. I was I've been up for so, some time now. I would have loved to have been there on time if I knew we were starting early. Uh, you know, and uh, earlier in the week, uh, I guess you had had a conversation about the nine, this 9 a.m. start, uh, not with me, because I had said earlier in the week I need uh, Friday at 8.30. I said it uh, throwing go, going away, but I was fully expecting uh, somebody uh, to post that. But then I decided at 6 o'clock when no one had posted it that I would say just an FYI. Actually, Mike, I, thinking back, I think that we did say 9 because I had to change with the talking head last evening. So I was operating un- until we got the text last night. We did I have was a op- back and forth about the 839. Yeah, I, I was operating. When did we do that? This was two uh, days ago. Two days ago or so? Because I, I was I operating. Didn't. I know for sure it was two days ago. I know for sure it was two days ago. I wasn't part of that. I knew I knew that I was uh, needed uh, an 830 start uh, probably two days ago. That's exactly no, but I think I big, what happened is, and Oscar, deal. back me Hold up. On, is, Rob, I'm not, this is not about that. It would, this wouldn't have been an issue, and I would have loved to have been there in the studio with you. If, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, sorry we're not being entertaining right now, but this is our in-house work that occasionally spills yeah. into yes. uh, the uh, the regular part. The the you protocol know. is if not someone, not just me, if, if if someone does not answer a text thread with the new time, we we kind of have a fire drill. We have a fire drill right. to say, someone hey, somebody has not gotten person. that, and and yeah. that's it. And Rob is in charge of that to call that person, unless it's Rob. Or some, or then it falls to me and to Trump, call Rob, and, and then it falls to you to call Rob right. to yeah. uh, to find out what's uh, what's going on with that. And at six oh three, when the text came in, I was still at the office. I would have, and I was at the office till eight thirty p.m. So I would have, I would have. Well, that's yeah. We could discuss that home. all day long. Your nocturnal schedule. Uh, that's a, you know, it's, a, you know, it's a, you know, a, a, to be honest with you, if this was a five p.m. show, it probably would catch you at your. Well, you what? What would you say? Would it be safe to say? Your when would your energy level peak? When, right when is the most ener- right now? <laughs> when when, oh, I, when I be, my work ethic is being questioned. No, I'm not questioning. Right who's now. questioning your work ethic? Well, just you said that my not. Well, no. The bottom schedule. line is the bottom line is to be honest with you. For a nine o'clock start, everybody should probably be on deck. Uh, we've had this discussion before by eight forty-five. That's really that would be helpful if we had a technical issue. And we wanted to start right at nine o'clock. We've had that discussion months and months. I'm not questioning your work ethic, but I'm also not going to give you a complete free pass on this because it would be like uh, if I was coming in late every day. You know, I'd like, I'd, I'd, I'd basically hold house. on a second. I would bet. What's that? You work in your house. I know I work in my house. I but that's the I could still be doing twenty other things. Are you saying because I work in my house that uh, that's the reason I'm on time? I still have to get up. I I still have to do. I get up. You know what time I get up every morning? I get up at five forty-five a.m. every morning to do show prep, to put my kid on a bus, to get in there and do that. I'm the biggest advocate of that. I tell people all the time. 
Come out. No, what I'm saying is, I uh, hold on. It just let me hear me out here, Mister Adrenaline and Testosterone. You, uh, you know, you have a fine work ethic. I was saying you are also a person who uh, stays up till one or two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning. I'm in bed. I was in bed at nine thirty last night. That has nothing to do with not being notified appropriately about an early start. No, and nor did I say it did, but I'm also saying that as far as I was asking before you got all defensive, I was asking <laughs> you, when do you think your most productive hours of the day are? Because you you always say. talk about being at work from 6.30, 8.30, 9.30, and yeah. then staying up and watching something at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. So my question again is when do you think you peak? I probably peak probably, I would say, uh, oh, 3.30 is a strong hour for me. A lot gets done. 3.30 p.m.? Yes. A lot. Okay. okay. A lot of people like uh, you know that are doing a 9 to 5 will uh, go out to lunch uh, of course, going out to lunch is not a thing anymore. Or after lunch, we'll have that kind of uh, dead spot between uh, two and three, and then they, you know, then they come back and they they roar. So uh, yeah, well, I pick up five hour energy around two. So you know, I hate it, Rob, when you're just it. sitting there and not even. Well, I'm being listening witty. to you. I'm not no, listening this to you. This is when you just quit. No, I don't. <laughs> oh, God, <laughs> sitting there just not wanting to say anything to avoid incoming fire. <laughs> No, you see, the thing is, Friggin is that, pisses me off. The thing about uh, the three o'clock thing is they used to say that the two, the three dead spots in a day for people energy wise are 10, two and four. And so Oscar peaking at three does make sense. But the five if I energy eat nuts, if I eat nuts, <laughs> nuts for lunch. All right. Yeah. Two things can happen. <clears throat> Excuse me. I can uh, destroy my digestive system. Right which I somehow did probably Tuesday of this week, and I'm still uh, reaping the award. Still rewards. feeling Can I just it. Say, still feeling and it. by the way, Oscar, I, we, we'll move on from this because it's not productive no, and it's I'm not entertaining. I'm enjoying the program. Uh, well, good. Thank you. Let me. Uh, and if you need to get off the phone to go up the stairs or whatever you need to do or you're in your car or whatever. Where, no, where the hell are you right now? I'm giving my you're wife. You're getting in your – okay. Bye, Peach. Love you. Bye, Bye, Bye Peach. <laughs> Um, I'll see you soon. Goodbye. Bye. Let me tell you. Uh, let me tell you where uh, where I am right now. Nut wise. Um, well, no. I actually thought, and I can ask you this. Now, now okay. Try not to be gross. Okay. All right. All uh, right. And by the way, uh, you know, we, you have to have a few tantrums once in a while because otherwise, it will always fall on you. You know right. what I mean? It will yeah. always fall on you because I understand where you're coming from with this. I mean, it's just. It, 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 you will admit. How would you rate the way from in a, on a yearly basis you right. know, with this with this task? It's always it always seems to fall on on you to do these things. You know what I mean? And then, well, yeah, it's housekeeping uh, you stuff. Knew. It's fine, yeah. But it's it's frustrating that I should have to follow up a text with a text or a phone call. No, 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 no. It's not following up a text with a text. It is a phone call. If someone does not respond to the text, you call them up and make sure they get the text, or you call their spouse and make sure they get. You, you see, know I this. find that I find I find that I find that frustrating. That well, but he, but it's part of the gig. It's like if I you don't respond, I and we can't we can't raise you. We got to call Carrie, and if Maddie doesn't respond, uh, you know, we got to call Buffalo and her father in the mayor's <laughs> office. Have to call the mayor's office, and but if it's... Pony doesn't respond, we have to call the morgue. <laughs> Uh, that's the way we have that's it on just speed the way dial. It goes. But I will say this is that of <laughs> of all the principals on the show, of all even the, the whole cast of the show, Oscar contact wise is the most elusive. He is elusive yeah. and it's hard to get at. And Absolutely. that's why it's, even to make a phone call to how many hard. times do you call? I mean, I know I call Oscar and he hangs up the phone and I get uh, a lot of times I will not get an answer. And then I will get a call two minutes later. He screams right. his calls that way. He uh, does, and then flipping nuts. You know? His voicemail has been full since I've known him, and right. and, and you know it, it also if you email Oscar, he requests a text to tell him that you've emailed him because well, yeah. again he's elusive. He's just very I elusive. Know. So uh, this is what I wanted to say uh, regarding the digestive system this week, which right. uh, you know, uh, welcome to 2021. It's always look, I'm 61. I realize now it's always going to be something, but right. digestively, uh, my 
uh, new way of eating and my love of uh, the mixed nuts at Costco have, uh, you know, to the point where, and this doesn't have to do with, with the nuts or anything like that, because I take a probiotic. Everybody, so I, there are major, major industries that are founded on the idea of having a, uh, you know, aid for your digestion, right? Yeah. Probiotics. Sure. Uh, you know, uh, even back to the days of Metamucil, Mike. I mean, it's, Metamucil, it's an old that type I of actually, stuff. Is I actually thought of you this week because there is a uh, Facebook page I'm on, uh, a Costco themed uh, Facebook page, like, right. like Costco enthusiasts, and a guy posted a picture of an empty nut container, and it, he says, "Does anybody have a good use for these?" Because oh, they're boy, stacking they'd be a fantastic, up. fantastic containers. So they you are great containers. Probably put flour. And yes, sugar, sugar and, you know, what a great salt. idea. But yeah. I was thinking of you is that every time you empty a nut container, you have another one, and pretty soon you have a match set. You're all set to go. Well, I am such a fan, but I, but yes. this is also, but digestively, and as the boys will tell you, uh, yesterday uh, we we taped a bonus show, and unfortunately I, uh, I took to the bed uh, after the regular show yesterday. Anyone who heard me uh, on yesterday's regular weather. show uh, would probably, it would be indicated by the way I uh, shared some of the sponsor messages. Just not myself. <laughs> Uh, but the good news is later in the broadcast, I will have a TV recommendation because I was able to enjoy a full feature film on my back yesterday. And, uh, when Rob were you asked in me your today, bed? were you in your bed or when you're in your recliner, how did you, I was in, I was in the bed actually yesterday. Wow. You I, actually took to your bed. When I, wow. do that, when I took to the bed. Uh, but I said to uh, Rob today, so well, how are you doing today? I said, meh. Uh, and, and that's just <laughs> the way it is. I will say this, and this is, this is going to be gross. So if you're sitting down to your breakfast and you're enjoying something, <laughs> or lunch, be be my or lunch or whatever you're listening or dinner or For a midnight me. snack. The show uh, has a long tail. When you hear this, just uh, this is what I thought. And as someone, and I want you to be really mindful of keeping this non-gross. All right, you're, it's uh, that's just a caveat here. Understood. I'm going to do the best I can. All right. Moments before I came in to do this show, uh, as <laughs> I was uh, I was in the in the commode. Yes. Uh, it occurred to me that uh, where I have been for probably a good long time now, since I have been on this new program, uh, that it would probably behoove me to, in some way, communicate to my gastroenterologist uh, the quality of uh, what what is done for most people once, sometimes twice a day. That's the right. way I wanted to do that. And okay. I know that it can become a discussion uh, right. with uh, with those people. But they're really, my guy, when I was talking about some issues, said uh, just to take some Miralax when you're uh, not functioning. I've been okay since I've been taking these probiotics. What hasn't been okay? Isn't Miralax kind of a... Uh an over-the-top treatment? Isn't that a little like a nuclear powered as opposed to like a Metamucil or another Maybe supplement? for some people, I think everybody varies. I think okay. your results may vary. Okay, uh, See you. your doctor if you have a bowel <laughs> movement lasting more than four and a half hours. Oh, no, okay. So, so here's what I was thinking. I was thinking um, that in order to communicate to him how I am doing, I should. I don't want to describe the situation. I understand. I'd rather like show. And so and there it's was not a, like I, the old days when you'd have to take a photograph that would be developed. You can no. actually, you can, you know, yeah, it's you quite take easy a digital now. photo. But I, I, I bagged the idea. I said, no, I don't want to do it. But I was thinking about taking a photo to say, uh, y y just to go in there. But I thought that would be too disgusting. But well, then I realized, well, if he is a medical professional, that is probably the best way for him to look at something. I'm sure. What filter in, would you went, use? I, I, <laughs> I'd probably go black and white. I would Maybe think it would be very tasteful. It. Yeah. But I mean, something. color is a factor. So uh, that's it. But well, at the for same me time, especially. I, I didn't do it. See, there you go. There you see. No, nah, that's what I don't want. That's what I don't that want. That was subtle. That was subtle. Yeah, Come but on, I know I, where you want to go with that. I, I will not. Want. I'm not going to do so, a thing. So that was the question that I had. Uh, that I, I think it's you know, okay if you come to the appointment armed with some photos. Don't post them on Instagram. But also, here what would what would be creepy is out out of the blue you texted him or emailed the photos. Well, without, no, I don't have a I don't have that kind of contact with the guy. Okay, him good, good, good. Maybe so, once. 
I've well, seen well, you him should, yeah, once in, in two years. So take that's some it, photos, so. choose the best one, and then go in and say, uh, you know, this is happening. And I'm just wondering, would you, could I show you? Hey, you know what I'm going to do? Here's okay. what I'm, what I'm going to do. Uh, I have no idea, nor do I have anything planned with this guy because I think right. I'm going to be okay. I think I've dealt with it long enough where I can, uh, you know, deal with my own digestive issues and I'm fine. But when the time does come, and if it is in the same uh, uh, vernacular, uh, th- that's not the word I wanted to use. If it's in the same situation, okay. I will I will photograph uh, and bring it with and okay. say I I you know I took the uh, this is you know that's exactly what I'm going to do. And once the subject comes up, because I will bring it up, I will yeah. say that. Because by the way, I feel like uh, I'm on the right path, but yes. at the same time. Uh, well, we play a clip from uh, Anthony Hopkins, uh, No More Odor Than a Hot Biscuit. That, oh, yeah, uh, The Road to Wellville. Particular, the Road to Wellville. Thank you for remembering that. Uh-huh. Uh, that makes up for all the lack of uh, call, calls to Oscar. The Road to Wellville, they have a big discussion on how your uh, poop should be. Yeah, and, stool, uh, Mike I fi- Stool. I, stool I, thank you. I always find that fascinating. So yeah. that's the answer there. The, if there is another appointment, there will be. I think there's once every uh, year or so. I will. Uh, I'll bring that along, and uh, everything should be as uh, the week A-okay. has progressed. Like let's take this morning as a snapshot example. There is, is no. Let me just better? say this. I know where your question is going to go. There has been no variation over the last month or two. That's okay. what I deal with. It's it's how it is. It's it's how it is. And let me see. Right now, uh, I will use a football analogy. All right. All right. My what I uh, what I deal with every day, uh, where some people, my wife included, would be the uh, Kansas City Chiefs. Yes. Uh, I am dealing on a uh, on a daily basis with well any number of teams in the NFC East. Understood. That's the, that's that. It's just it, you know, can we on any given day perhaps be better than others? Yes, but uh, but really the odds are overwhelming. You're going to be disappointed. Yeah, that's kind me, of where. Mike- yeah. It's, if you just look over the last 20 years of my life, it's J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. So you're that bad? Really? Yeah, it's, it's pretty consistently bad, yeah. So but, you anyway, know, you that's deal with a, it. You deal it. with it. It's what it is. Uh, if anybody was expecting the three of us to be chatting today, no, it's just Oscar uh, gone uh, <laughs> late and uh, Rob and I talking about poo. That's, uh, that's what it is. I, I, but you know what? For everybody that deals with that, please, 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 and remember I'm telling you this, yeah. I really, really, really – don't want to get any advice. I don't want to get exactly. any advice. All that's right? what, that's I'm the last fine. thing in the world you want. I will deal with it. And I know that uh, perhaps the, uh, the weight loss with, uh, with protein and, uh, and nuts, not the best thing. You know, no. the Costco uh, giant cauldron of, uh, of nuts. I can't even tell you how many cashews and uh, Brazil nuts I've been eating in the last uh, two weeks. What if That's you were to focus on really one nut? Do you think one nut would treat you better? Like if you got a container just of cashews? Well, I have. I, okay. Uh, I, All I, right. I, and the, that, no benefit the cashews, from that? The cashews are actually uh, phenomenal, and uh, that's it. The best. No. I'll be mm. fine. And, uh, and the stress adds to it, too, which is uh, why today has been so difficult for me. That's it. That's what uh, we have. You know, I love when they, yeah. uh, if you get like a diet plan or some sort, and they say, you know, nuts are a good snack. Have a snack of one and a half to two ounces of nuts. And mm-hmm. that's just comical. There's no way in right. the world that's a serving. You can't buy right. that. No, no way. Oh, look who's here. <laughs> look who's here right now. Hello, team. Fast turnaround. Uh, hi. We've been talking about poop while you were on because you oh, would have been grossed man. out. So. Let me, no, uh, there's a poop app that I wanted to bring up a couple weeks ago. Oh, that's right. You delisted. can post your picture to that. What, is it poop? anonymous? No, no. no. I, I don't want anything where this is some kink that we're talking about. No, it's a competition I really don't on want to who's, do uh, the most, who has the most uh, healthy uh, IG track. Really? Yeah, well, okay. it's, well, uh, you I'd, know. I'd be bringing up the rear, so to speak. On that <laughs> hey! <particular one. laughs> I would be. It would a be, lot of oatmeal? Is that what we're getting these days? No, I'm talking about the fact that um, with the weight loss, and by the way, 31 Congratulations. pounds. And, uh, yeah, counting. it shows. I, I think I kind of just got through the uh, holiday. Uh, you know, we, I'm, I'm having a little fluctuations right now as far as uh, staying motivated. Uh, I... I usually eat a pretty high protein diet, and then the only time I would eat anything that is uh, outside of the realm of the the protein, I'm eating some nuts, and uh, that really is. Causing what are some you? Distress. You've been waving a packet in your hand. What is that? This is my uh, my screen cleaner. It's a. Uh, oh, okay, I thought it was the Miralax because you kept screen mentioning screen cleaning. This Rob is 
a screen cleaning towelette. Of course. Like That's <laughs> alcohol and ammonia free. Cleaning towelette. I almost got a Letterman uh, mark there. See? Yeah, your bad hands. <laughs> there it is. Uh, but anyway, that's uh, other than that, I mean, I would say that's pretty close to a hand model right there. Look at yeah, that. Yeah, beautiful. You have great cuticles. Pretty, ma- pretty good pretty yeah. good manicure right Mine there. And I, that's, self, that's self-done all the way with that. You don't have the wife By the way, I it? can't do that every day. There are days that probably, uh, there was a day about a month ago I did take a shower, but I'd been working in my golf cart the day before, <laughs> and I would not have uh, had these beautiful, pristine nails that I have right now. Uh, so, in any Oscar, event. the poop <laughs> app that you, we've, we've flirted with talking about in the past, it's its not a sexual thing at all? It's no, a no, but it, it, it's flaw, It's fatally flawed. And look, this is nothing anyone should be really into, and I think it has been delisted. Where you would upload your uh, leave-ins and it'd be ranked on a worldwide leaderboard, and oh um, dear, there was there was a threat about. How come it was delisted? That's so sad. That's so sad. Well, it, you know, it. any power rankings I think have some sort of <laughs> threshold for sure, an app store. <laughs> I'm not sure it should be an international competition because I would think there are certain regional diets around the world that would have advantages. Well, our society's built on competition, right? But what is it, what eventually happens? What, what do we find out about the Olympics half the time that they're everyone, canceled? No, everyone. Well, <laughs> that is false. I just heard a report about oh, that. Okay, very good. Um, that. You know, some of our greatest heroes, they take performance, like PEDs. They take performance enhancing drugs. and mm-hmm. Like Miralax. S- <laughs> I could see somebody to dovetail on your conversation, yeah. jumping yeah. onto that worldwide leaderboard and say, I'm going to show them. And then, mm-hmm. and, you know, take some PEDs. And then one theory was that you could, you could hypothetically, you know, do your business and then leave it there. And then do your business again. And that's how you're going to get to the top of the heap. Oh, ah. like like a massive production. Yes. <laughs> but I know that there are regions where cuisine has to do with it. I know that of course. Uh, there's an area in northwestern Ireland uh, where they're known for their incredible stools. <laughs> and they, they are. <laughs> Simply because of, of their, their staple, their, their diet that they eat every single day. It's well, uh, you know, it's it's a special special part of northwestern Ireland. What what is the what is their particular thing that gives them their their credibility? They eat hay. <laughs> it's the Michael Mara Show. You can listen to the Michael Mara Show at www.michaelmarashow.com. Stay tuned for an outstanding entertainment program. It's the Michael Mara Show. Let's get down to business. From the entertainment capital of the world. It's the Michael Mara Show. <laughs> Michael Mara, Rob Spiewak, Oscar Santana. And now, from his easy chair, here's Mike. From Washington, D.C., this is the Mike O'Mara Show, a daily radio show and podcast with a loyal legion of listeners who are uh, listening to us every day in every corner of the world. This is TMOS, heard in great places like Roseburg, Oregon, Salva, North Carolina, Hurricane Utah. That's interesting for a town in Utah. They don't get hurricanes in Utah, do they? Well, they drink them. Oh, no, that's New Orleans. Oh, and actually Utah, they wouldn't drink at all alcohol. Yeah, Yeah, you know what? Uh I don't like the name. Change the name of your town. Someday, no, I like it. So that's it's obviously a real town. Gallup, New Mexico, Hammondsport, New York, and Kotka, Finland. The Mike O'Mara Show is on now, and we keep telling you the rates are great. And Cornerstone First yes. Financial is the place you need to go if you want to get a refi or a uh, home mortgage. Rates are still at a fifty-year low. If you have uh, three point two five percent or higher, remember that number. If your rate that you're paying right now is three point two five percent or higher, you need to take advantage of this massive refi before. It comes to a screeching halt. Don't wait until it's too late. You have to call my good friend Mark Livingstone and his team at Cornerstone First Financial and do it right now. Other companies quote window rates to get you interested without telling you about their junk fees and points. Mm. Jerks. Uh, Call the only company that I recommend, Cornerstone First Financial, 202-625-1221. I'm working with them right now, and I have used them for the entire process. When I got a a mortgage on the home, I am sitting in right now. The home I am in right now, I got a mortgage through Cornerstone First Financial. You should, too. They offer all the loan products, including a no-closing cost option and the absolute lowest interest rates guaranteed. These rates will not be low forever. Cornerstone First Financial, 202 625-1221 or cornerstonefirst.com. Personal attention from application to closing. Uh, My favorite segment, 
really going away of the week is uh, our TMOS talking head. I always love doing this. It's fantastic. So exciting. Let's get our talking head on right now. This is Kaya. Did I pronounce that correctly? Kaya exactly Downing. Right. Exactly. Just like Larry King's uh, daughter. Kaya has been a uh, probation and parole officer at the Iowa Department of Corrections 93rd Judicial District in Sioux City, Iowa, since 2005. Uh, Before that, she spent 10 years as a police officer for Sioux City. She was uh, a a street officer. She was street officer. (laughs) She was street officer. (laughs) It's supposed to be she was a street officer, Yes, it should be, yes. Mm -hmm. That's $20 A right there. <laughs> you snooze, you lose. Yeah, so much. Uh, had many run ins with uh, stupid people who enjoyed drugs and uh, OWIs. We'll ask her what those are. Okay. Uh, she has been married for 20 years to Brad. He's a retired cap. Uh, mm-hmm. She is one of five family members that have had careers in law enforcement. Uh, they have two daughters, Shay and Nissa. Uh, did I, I hope I pronounced not if I pronounced Nissa correctly. Thank you. Uh, and a corgi named Duke. I love little dogs with macho names. Duke. Duke. Yay, yay. Yay, 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 yay. Yay. Duke. Uh, Anyway, uh, she originally discovered the show in 96 in her squad car uh, while cruising the AM dial and landing on KLEM 1410 AM in Lamar's, (laughs) Iowa. I don't even remember that one. I don't either. She found the podcast nine years ago when she was missing us and uh, found the podcast via Google. Uh, Her favorite part of the podcast is the way the three principals interact. You got a lot of that this morning. Mm -hmm. And uh, she says we are all so different. Yeah, we are. Uh, She also loves Jimmy Cerrito and Nikki Diamond. We all do. How about that? Uh, It says here, ask her about the time she spent as a police decoy. Oh, I will. Uh, She's in her office today where she focuses exclusively on parolees. She's those POs, those tough POs. Uh, To be our talking head today, she had to reschedule a removal of a parolee's ankle bracelet. Thank you. So, you know, it's such a hassle. You have to go down. You have to get the saw. Uh, That's it. Um, Wow. Oh, yeah. yeah you, so I, well, I want to do that. God, you got one right there. That's cool. Uh, there are two kinds of them. Uh, I, I got so many questions already. Yeah. She is a, a motorcyclist, a church volunteer, an accomplished mask maker, has avoided COVID despite prison outbreaks, and has some show and tell. Please welcome Kaya Downing as our Yay! talking head. Another. Oh, yeah. See, I could be with you for six hours, Kaya. Welcome to the Mike O'Mara Show. How are you? I'm good. How are you guys? Glad to be uh, here. Thanks for having me. Fantastic. So many questions. Hey, hey uh, for Mark, you. Yes. Just before we start, what? Where did you say my employer is? The ninety third. Uh, uh, let 93rd. me see. Yeah, yeah, the, the, uh, the Iowa Department of Corrections ninety third Judicial District. Just, well, we don't have that. Many, I mean, we have ninety nine counties, but we only have eight judicial districts, and we're in the third judicial. The district. third, the third. Oh, the third. Oh, so, okay. who, uh, yep. so you told Rob that, right? I've been I told bad Rob note that. Taking, I suppose. So yeah. Rob, I did you? I, I, this is this is Rob's. Rob's having him a, himself a day. This today. is the fun part. So uh, yeah. it's, it's just it's like every day, though. It's every no, it's yeah. every day for him. <laughs> uh, so what's the reason for that, Rob? Do you have any idea? Uh, we had a very uh, intense and fun pre-interview last night, and I was taking notes. Fun might any- be the key. <laughs> Leave the fun for here and be less jovial and happy and actually pay attention to the details. Well, I, was, I, I guess my note-taking skills got the best of me. So I, when I transcribed Because you were being happy, jovial, the social Rob. Well, yeah, but to, to do that, you do that sometimes to bring out the best of the to guests. To confirm, it's the third precinct, correct? The third, not 93rd. The third. Right. District. third judicial district. Thank you. I was having fun. I'm so, so sorry. Glad. Thank you. I am so glad. So <laughs> let's see. Uh, uh, so you're a PO, basically. That's what you do. I'm you're a, a PO. PO. Yeah. Uh, that has got to be, uh, I would imagine, let's start with that, with your job, Kaya, because sure. uh, I would imagine my idea for from, uh, you know, movies that I watch, uh, you know, all of my criminal friends that I deal with, <laughs> criminal uh, friends. that the PO, it's, uh, it is by its very nature, somewhat of an adversarial position when it comes to dealing with people who have gotten out of jail uh you know you have to make sure that they're uh living life the way they're uh, supposed to the way the uh, judges told them to uh that's got to be i would imagine that takes some getting used to does it not it certainly does i mean um you know i thought when i came over here that i was like okay i know this uh now i'm just on the other side of law enforcement and it's kind of you know the hand in hand like 
law enforcement takes them to jail. Mm-hmm. They go to jail and prison. I get them. So I'm like, I got this. I know this. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, <laughs> that no, is, totally it's different a year. whole different mindset of dealing with people and their problems and getting them to be comfortable to talk to you to let you know what's really going on with them so that they can get the right help but you're right you know sometimes it's adversarial in that i'm like what are you doing knock it off you want to go back to prison but sometimes i'm like hey it's tough it's pandemic i get it so you use drugs all right how many times have you been using drugs? Once? All right. Knock it off. Don't do it again. Get some help. Five times? Dude, no, really. Knock it off. Get some help. <laughs> and, you know, to the tune that sometimes it's like, all right, what's what's my line here? Is my line, you know, some of them will ask me, how many can I do? And I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> you know, we don't do it like that. I don't tell you my number. I don't give you all my secrets. So I would imagine it's, it's, uh, in that line of work. Uh, and this is, I, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but it's just a question that popped into my head because I would think, I know a retired PO down here, uh, a lady uh, who was a PO up in uh, the Midwest where you are. And I would just think that it would, uh, similar to being uh, a cop, it, it would be a a job that would at times wear on your faith in humanity. That's just, uh, you know, where you would just, Get to a point where you're saying, oh, I'm so, what is wrong with people? Uh, A, is that true? B, how do you deal with it? That is totally true. In fact, I had one of those days yesterday in that um, at least three, if not four of my people all day long were telling me, you know, what they've been doing, but they have absolutely no, you know, connection to the fact that the people they're hanging around, they're not supposed to be hanging around. Mm. So like, just tell me a story. Oh yeah. You know, I have this boyfriend in prison and, and I was emailing him and I'm like, what, wait, stop. You what? (laughs) You're not supposed to be having contact with him. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's okay. We were cellies and it's all right. I'm like, "Er, no, (laughs) it's not. (laughs) So yeah, you know, yesterday in their brains, now sometimes I let them steer the appointment and sometimes I'm totally taking charge. Yesterday, a couple of them were like, you know, telling their stories in their in their thought process. And, you know, I get I get it once it's like, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, whoa, wait, stop. And then I figure out what the real problem is. Mm-hmm. Well, had I known what the real problem is, work, drugs, uh, home life, stress, pandemic, blah, 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 blah. It really would have taken like 20 minutes. But for them because of their drug use, their mental health, their all of the, it takes them like an hour to actually get there. Mm. And that's wow. part of the job that you, uh, do you have, like, for example, do you have, uh, you know, a la a psychotherapist, do you have a set time when a parolee comes into your office? I mean, do you, do you have to have a level of flexibility, uh, in a circumstance like that? I do. Um, and, and that's probably the part that I struggle with is I probably give them way too much of my own time. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's so tough. It's such a part of society that we don't see that the average people, I don't want to monopolize the questions here, but it just fascinates yeah. me, uh, because I, you know, I get that impression that it can be a very, very taxing and like, Oh God, people suck. Uh, go ahead, Oscar. I know you have uh, So thank you. Thank you for your service on us, especially during this time. I, I can empathize well, in, in some of uh, the way that you were describing how hard it is to to really understand why somebody would would tell you all of this, even though it's all wrong, and then you have to explain to them, hey, we've talked about this. It's wrong. I have uh-huh. this situation with Pony Boy almost every day when I talk to him, <laughs> say, hey, how was your day? And he tells me everything he's done, and I'm like, oh no, let's sit down and talk about this. Mike, you understand? <laughs> I understand. Yes. I do. I, I do. <laughs> that's it. That's it. Uh, what we were saying, you know, we call you, and if we don't get you, we call Shannon. If we don't get yeah. Pony, we call yeah. the morgue. Yeah. Uh, that's, uh, that's basically the way, uh, the way that works. I'd right. like to ask a uh, question, because yes. you talk about how you, you're married to a cop. He's retired now. And there's three other people in your family that are in law enforcement. What is the common chip that draws you to a job that is probably very rewarding, but also equally as challenging? Oh, wow. I haven't like sat down with all the other ones and asked you, hey, why did you do this? But I right. think the well, common, speak for yourself, then. you know, de- what? 
but then speak for yourself. I'm curious. Oh, sure, it's really, sure. it's got to be, mean, it's, it's yeah. a weird fiber within you that would draw you to do the job, I would think. Yeah. I mean, I think for all five of us, um, we all have outgoing personalities. We all genuinely deep down want to help people. A service and chip. we yeah. all are, you know, high, high strung and type A personalities. And we don't want to be sitting behind the desk doing the same thing all day, every day. Right. I mean, I was really good at math in high school, but I could never be an actuarial scientist or working for an insurance <laughs> company. I'd be freaking bored. <laughs> all right. Well, listen, we're so, talking to Kaya Downing. We're going to take a break. And uh, then I've got a few uh, more c- uh, questions about your gig because it is fascinating okay. that uh, you're a PO. A PO. And I, I love saying that. Hey, we got to go see my PO. Got to go <laughs> see my PO. And then we'll ask you about when you were a police decoy. And, uh, and then we'll talk about how you love us. Uh, anyway, we'll take a break and uh, we'll come back with a little more with uh, Kaya right here on the Mike O'Mara Show, everybody. <laughs> you get Oscar Rob this week as Mike ate too many nuts. Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show. <laughs> nuts. Uh, brought to you by Public Rec. I'll be honest, ever since we've been dealing with the COVID, uh, fashion hasn't exactly been top priority. Am I right? Am I right? Right, 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 right. Uh, But feeling sloppy eventually gets old, and no one wants to see you running around your neighborhood in old sweats. It's a pants-demic. Get it? <laughs> And the only way to cure it is public rec. They oh. make leisure wear in waist and inseam sizes because comfort starts with a better fit. Uh, oh, a lovely maroon number that Oscar's modeling for us right now. Oh, shake to, it, uh, baby. Shake we're it. counting on seeing Ro- Oscar's butt this uh, week. You got it. Uh, the <laughs> pants, they're just, they're really, really amazing, and they're different. They're not average uh, style. They're, they're very unique, and yes. they're super comfortable. Public rec has incredibly comfortable shorts, T-shirts, Henleys, polos, hoodies, jackets, even golf gear. You can live in this stuff. Public Rec rarely offers discounts, but right now they have an exclusive offer just for our listeners. Go to publicrec.com slash TMOS and use promo code TMOS to receive 10% off. That's publicrec, spelled R-E-C, dot com slash TMOS and use our promo code TMOS for 10% off. Off. We're uh, dealing with. I, I, I just. I say it every single week, and it probably gets burned out. I, I never get tired of this. These stories that our listeners have. I'm so thrilled with our listener base because it's just everybody has an interesting story. And by the way, young broadcasters out there, this is what it's all about: hearing what somebody else has to say. That's what I love. That's why I like working collaboratively. And that's why I love this, uh, what this has become, the talking head. Kaya Downing is a uh, talking to us from Iowa uh, right now. And uh, what an incredible uh, story just to do that for uh, a living. And there are people like you all over the country, and we should appreciate the people that are dealing with that. And uh, uh, I hate to ask you this question, but I have to. Uh, the most scared you've ever been oh, good question good question by a uh one of your clients uh and you don't have to mention any names but i mean did you i mean i would say if you've been doing this since 05 i would imagine imagine you've had every type of human being come through that door imaginable and uh, maybe you weren't scared i mean in the environment but i mean what is uh what and are also, some of the Mike, memorable she was a cop. remember she was a cop 10 years before that so she's been yeah i know but the, but the time. po part is what i, I I'm, I'm more curious about what do you think uh what are some of the more memorable uh, visitors you've had the mental health uh ones that either realize or don't realize they have a mental health problem and i do um or the ones that have no mental health problems and don't take their prescribed medications and then try to self-medicate with illegal drugs mm. Uh, mm. so you have had what you're telling me is you've had people walk through that door that are under the influence uh, oh, in many yeah. cases rather rather uh, severely is there uh you know i have been touched uh by the opiate crisis i've seen that in uh up close and personal nothing like it and uh, in a place like iowa I know it's extremely severe. Where, where where do you think it stands right now? I mean, it's not. Is it getting better? Is it getting worse? Has COVID exacerbated it? What's uh, what's going on right now? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, on the parole side of it, I guess from from my perspective, we see yeah. a lot more methamphetamine out here. Oh, than you do, we meth. Do, okay. Yes, yes. Then we do um, heroin or or um, those type of drugs. A lot, still a lot of marijuana. A lot of prescription drugs, though, too. Um, so yeah, it's Ooh, frustrating. Has a question. And any boneheaded, uh, criminals where you roll up and there's like three keys of cocaine on their passenger side, just <laughs> sitting on there like it was a bag of McDonald's, but it's drugs. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. 
Do you do oh, home yeah. visits? Do you do home visits? Do you actually knock on somebody's door occasionally? Uh, before COVID, we did a lot more. Sure. Okay. Um, a la COVID now, we're being more careful and selective in those ones that we're doing. Um, we're kind of doing it more that when we suspect or really know there's something going on, then we'll go knock on the door. But we don't necessarily do the random ones as much anymore. Mm-hmm. Now, well, you, I mean, it's, I have to it's, say it's... I'm not coming. So don't even okay. thank you for all these. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> yes, officer. Pre-cat. <laughs> yes, P.O., I, I get it. All right, I have to ask you this one about when you spent uh, time, that sounds like a long period of time, yeah. as a police decoy. Uh, you were on the job for 10 years before you became a P.O. Uh, that sounds scary right there. Tell us about that. It's scary, but, hey, it was kind of fun because uh, I was actually a prostitution decoy. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> uh, were you? <laughs> really? <laughs> Did you oh, yeah. and how long? How long did you? Uh, so you were what? You were uh, fishing for Johns? Is that what it was to uh-huh. bust Johns? Uh, oh, that's so sad. Uh, you know, the uh, oh you know, as that, uh, those this, poor Johns. They, they, you know what? Hey, they're you know just what? Trying they, to make a living from an earlier time in love. my life. Sorry about it. Earlier time in my life, I misspoke. I misspoke. Sorry, officer. I shouldn't have said that. So you, uh, how long did you do? How long did you pose as a hooker? How long did that go? <laughs> Uh, well, we would do it about every six months or so, and just like one night a week. And it was oh just, it was God. just very, you know, specific to hey, let's do a thing. All right, let's set it up. Da, da, da. Well, so did the guys? Uh, uh, so the guys would come in. Uh, would you be on standing on the street? Would you be in a car? Uh, yeah, what's the hot corner be- in Iowa? <laughs> what's the hot corner in hot Sioux corner. City? Oh my God! That's got to be a little bit. Uh, you 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 probably ruined a lot of evenings, right? Uh, a lot a lot of fear based stuff. Please don't tell. How many? Uh, you figure uh, an estimate of how many Johns what was, you? What was a good night? You, yeah, what was a good night for you? That's a that's a good that's the question. <laughs> um. Well, I I will say I did uh, I did two deals at at the same time. Whoa. One. Wow! Really, like two guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Really? So I was standing on the street corner and, you know, I'm, I'm mic'd up there. And this was like, you know, early 2000. So there's, there's no video. There's, mm-hmm. no, there's none of that, but I got audio. So I'm all mic'd up. Um, undercover officers are watching me, listening to me. And we had this specific street corner set up. So I'm standing there and the Johns are kind of circling in their cars. And, you know, by that point, we kind of already know who they are. And then I can just tell by standing out there that, wow, I've seen that car twice. Hey, three times. So I'm like kind of dictating that into my mic for the guys to hear. Sure. So here comes the car on one side of the building and it's a corner. And I was on the east side of the building. And so I'm making a deal over here and, you know, to try to like get um, out of sight for the arrest. I'm like, hey, you know, there's like, there's a lot of cops around here. So how about you meet me in the back alley and I'll get in your car over there and then we'll, we'll be good. So that was the signal to my guys, you know, to my undercover officers. Okay. There's deal made. And of course, you know, I gotta, do, I gotta say the spiel about okay, right. what do you want? How much you right. can? Blah, blah, blah. I gotta make right. that deal. So I make the deal. The guy drives off and he goes like, he's going to go in the back alley. So they're going to make the deal. I see squads coming and I see, you know, red and blue, um, cherries or whatever you want to call them, see the lights. And so I go, I, the car goes that way. I go this way. Well, then I realize as I'm walking south that here's another car of another John. <laughs> and I'm like, two for one special. Hey guys, yeah. Yeah. Two for one special. I'm like, Hey guys, I know this is really going to piss you off. And um, I, we'll see what happens, but I'm just going to go make another deal. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> and you got him. And Great. So, yeah. And so I round the corner and oh now God. I'm on the south side of the building talking to this other guy, making this other deal. And, and, you know, I can't hear them. I can't hear the officers back in my ears, but they can hear me. And so I just know, just in my head, I'm going, oh, that they're thinking, Oh hell, Kai! What are you getting us into? <laughs> are you do this? <laughs> and so I totally worked it with the John, with the bad guy, um, to just go. Oh my gosh! You know, there's a lot of cops around here, and 
oh whoa dude there's like there's cops there must be something going on here oh shoot they'll be busy with that it, it's all right now what is it that you need i'm picking i'm picturing pretty woman obviously because that's the uh that's the hollywood you know uh image of, of the prostitute how did you get yourself dolled up to do the sting operation oh that you know well, what that is it that you know i knew someone was gonna we're out of time rob i'm really <laughs> really sorry about that you know okay you maybe maybe you could check in the post interview and uh, find out what she wore in her hooker outfit okay we can do that that late it's the me too era <laughs> Horny Bob, thank you, thank you very much. We will do. What do you wear? What do you wear? What do you wear? You know, uh, skirt or pants? Just out of curiosity. Jeans. Jeans. Hockey okay. Jeans. Oh, yeah. Okay. Hulk, All right. Flannel shirt. This is Iowa. All right. We, we, All we right. got farmers coming into the big city to to take care of their business. So. Uh, <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, Kaya, uh, we always give you a chance to say anybody you want to say hi to before we let you go here. A long segment with our talking head yes. this week. Yeah, I want to say hi to Brad, Shay, and Nissa, my husband and my kid, uh, my brother and family, his parents, all of my friends who over the years who you know, have listened to me vent about how law enforcement and, and corrections is so mentally draining and to just like help me out whether you knew it officially or unofficially you were really helping me so oh, thank wow. you um, to my coworkers, to mcdonald's for and um, being open this morning get my coffee because y'all made me get up so early this morning <laughs> and really to, really to all those other first responders out there working the front lines on this um it's it's really tough and we're we're doing our best and sometimes it's not what you know um you know normal because this still isn't normal so just right. be patient and bear with us. And if you have a question, ask. But don't make assumptions based on what you don't know and why someone is doing what you see them doing because you just don't know what's going on in their head. Whether it's a criminal, whether it's a, an officer, whether it's... You just don't know. So be kind to each other. Please. Oh, amen. Wow. Coming well from a PO. Well and uh, Rob, see if she can sell me one of those Department of Corrections sweatshirts. I would wear that every single day. Awesome. Absolutely. That is hey, so very cool. My Hawkeye colors here, huh? Yeah, huh? Hawkeye yeah. colors with the Department of Corrections. Oh, Love fantastic. It. It didn't well last night, but, you know. No, no okay. and, uh, I'll be hearing about that today. I, they all live down here. Uh, thank you very much, Kaya. <laughs> thank you, Kaya. Uh, we love you. Thank, thank, thank you. you so very much. Keep up the great work. We will take a break, and we will come back with more fun and more thrills on the Mike O'Mara Show. Come back to the Mike O'Mara Show, and everybody yeah pause that tv mike and then uh, when you start the show it pops on automatically thank you sure. very much uh <laughs> this portion of the mike o'mara show brought to you by movement let me show you my movement watch Ooh. that i've got on oh, right excellent. now this is a uh this is a beautiful beautiful love time it. Piece. Oh, i love it, it really really is and uh i love the uh the design of these they get better all the time yep. once upon a time in an apartment believe it or not in southern california Two college dropouts teamed up to create a watch company that broke all the rules. I'll hold it up like that while I'm doing the commercial. Fair prices, unexpected colors, and clean original designs. Movement grew into one of the fastest growing brands, shipping to over 160 countries across the globe. Now Movement has expanded into blue light glasses that protect your eyes from screens, minimalist jewelry, and more style essentials that don't break the bank. All designed uh, out in their uh, California headquarters. If you got to spend all day in front of my computer, like me, uh, right. the Ever Scroll blue light filtering glasses are a game changer. It really helps with eye strain and poor sleeping patterns. And I love the modern style of the frames. If you want to elevate your look with style that doesn't break the bank, then join the movement and get 15% off today with free shipping and free returns by going to MVMT.com slash TMOS. Again, that's MVMT.com slash TMOS. And we thank you. Crazy, crazy show today. I mean, just uh, uh, getting behind on time. That's the way it goes. I didn't get anything that I wanted to talk Real about Real quick, today. Mike, uh, can I mention that uh, Kaya was great, but also, you know, we do need a talking head every week. We have a few in the hopper, but if you're interested, don't think that you can't jump to the head of the line with a sensational story. Just send me an email, rob at mikeomarashow.com, cool. and we'd love to have you on as a talking head. That's Rob with yeah, two and, and and the thing about the talking heads, it doesn't, it, you know, everybody's got, it, it, it doesn't have yeah. to be somebody in law enforcement. It no. doesn't, it's just, we love people's stories. If you have a particular story, you know, anything you'd 
like to share. If you think, hey, you know what? The guys would be interested in this. Uh, bring it along. We would yes. love to hear from you. And you know what? We're also not averse to uh, hearing about how you found the show. Mm -hmm. That's always special, too, because it's sure. about us. Yes, sure. that's the way that works. <laughs> uh, oh, my God. It, you know what? It, not We don't have enough time to talk about uh, is anyone feeling more peaceful now? I uh, Because I may be starting to feel more chill uh, now that I don't think about uh, the government every yeah, day. But, but Mike, you know? what, what you lack in government worries you have with nuts. The yes, nuts aren't helping. True. This is true. Uh, you know what I thought about last weekend? I was What's on that? the golf course. I thought about me, and I thought about the personalities, and I thought about the fact uh, that I am a golfer, and I wrote this down today. Uh, we won't have time to discuss it because I'm sorry I'm running so late. We have to get Oscar's take on here. Oscar's I am a take. golfer. Uh, this is my statement. I am a golfer, and I am a selfish asshole. Mm. That's uh, that's <laughs> oh, no. really that's that's what it Much is. Much like you Tiger know, the, Woods. Uh, you, you, you the nature yeah. of this game. Yeah. Uh, by the way, all athletes are uh, into themselves, but. Team sports are different. You make sacrifices for the team. That's why in the world of solo sports, uh, even if you're doing it recreationally, uh, everybody's in their their own trip. And, uh, and th that is why I believe that a certain type of individual gravitates to the game, and yeah. myself included. I do that. With that said... Uh, I would say that there, there's one thing you're not going to find on a golf course. What's that? You're rarely going to find empathy. You know, they'll show up for a funeral. They'll do that. But as far as uh, the, the <laughs> that's high the, praise, <laughs> the empathy, the empathy gene is uh, is just not there. It's a, it's it's broken. You know what I but mean? It's part of it's the fabric like, of the game, isn't it? Though. Well, the thing is, uh, they talked about uh, this week a lot about Joe Biden's empathy and how he's really great yeah. uh, because of what he's gone through in his own life. And, you know, I believe that. You look at his history, you look what he's done, it's fantastic. And I was like, well, hmm, is that an Irish uh, tradition? Uh, is that an Irish characteristic? I said, I'm not sure whether it's <laughs> Irish. Although, I will tell you when the empathy kicks in with me, like, for example, if I go into a restaurant and yeah. I see somebody sitting alone, I uh, I have a real problem with that. I always feel bad. I literally feel bad about, uh, and I think that uh, when I go into a restaurant and I see that a server is inundated with people just being very demanding, I feel uh, for that. I I tend to have empathy in weird directions, but when it comes to somebody like within my own family, uh, you know, getting getting sick like my wife getting sick right. i uh, that's where the empathy chip is a little weak for me <laughs> it's where the golfer comes out oh you know, yeah just an hopefully you know. it's not covid like for, and you don't kill me yeah how's your sense you gotta, of smell <laughs> at cocoonville we got a practice area yeah all right we got a practice area uh a little what's called a chipping green and right. it's where you practice short shots right and so i uh and they they take golf balls and they place them everywhere around this there are hundreds of golf balls around. That's what that and is? That's, uh, I've, I've they, they, seen that at different clubs. I'm like, man, they just yeah. leave balls laying around like they don't care. No, they're care. just for, they're, they're for, they're for people to practice. That's I what thought you they see were party every... favors. Oscar filled his pockets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, take them home. Yeah. And, and I come out, and there's this guy down here that practices every day. Okay. And because, I mean, I'm talking about 9 a.m. until dark. Mm. A lot. Like, insane like bordering and, and he on, practices okay, a lot to moan <laughs> he practices a lot i'm getting out i park the car i walk over and there is a pile of these golf balls and i am uh going to work on what is called a flop shot over the bunker hitting the ball high All right. and i walk over and uh i didn't see that there were two or three clubs like 12 feet away mm -hmm. i just right. assumed they were for something else and i walk over and i hear this hey 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 those are mine. And I went, we're golfers. We are complete selfish a-holes. And, and I, yeah, there was a way of saying that. And uh, yeah. there was a way. So what I did was I took the, go the golf ball, I bladed it and hit him right in the forehead. No, I didn't. <laughs> that was just a fantasy uh, that I had. I'm sorry. We're out of time. Golfers are a-holes. I'm one of them. Thank you. I disagree. That was I think my, they're marvelous people. Yeah. yeah. And I didn't even get a chance. I was in bed all day, but I happened to uh, watch a great. I can do it at the beginning of Oscar's Day. Oscar's Day. Uh, I love it. Uh, 
I will give you the recommendation for the weekend because it's fantastic. Oh, good. Uh, and it'll balance out your what are you wearing question you uh, wearing? right here on the Mike O'Mara Show. We'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show brought to you by Noom. And uh, hold off on the music uh, after this spot, Rob, because I know you can play that music, but it's just the, Oh, okay. Uh, the yeah, Oscars. Right okay. I'm with you. I'm with you. My movie right. right on. Noom is what I want to tell you about. People love to offer advice about the uh, best way to eat. Yeah, look, you, you can't take it from 500 different people. No. Uh, you need pros to take care of it. That's why I love Noom. It's based in psychology. It teaches you how to eat because you don't need rules to lose weight. You need knowledge. Noom personalizes a weight loss program just for you, and it's only 10 minutes a day. It's flexible. It's got empathy. We were just talking about yes. that. It's easy. It's forgiving. If you stumble, get back on the pony. That's the way you do it. Don't believe me? Over 80% of Noomers finish the program, and over 60% have stuck with their goals for at least a year. Oscar loves it. Carla loves it. I love it. There's love a yourself. science to getting healthier. It's called Noom. Sign up for your trial today at Noom, N-O-O-M dot com slash T-M-O-S. Learn how to eat again with Noom. Sign up for your trial today at Noom, N-O-O-M dot com slash T-M-O-S. Ready to learn how to live healthier? Sign up for Noom today at N-O-O-M dot com slash T-M-O-S. Before we get to Oscar's take, Oscar's here's the reco for you. This is a... <laughs> Uh, if that brain could be used for good. Uh, anyway, uh, this is the uh, this is the show that yeah, the movie you need to watch. Incredible pay for you purview. Watch it last night. A promising young woman. That is the name of the movie. Okay. Remember that. A promising, okay. young, a promising young, woman. young woman. If you are a super misogynist, if you uh, have abused women in your lifetime, oh. you do not want to watch this movie. It is uh, it is a you know it is a very heavy duty. Uh, movie uh, that that really deals with some very dark themes but it has a little bit of a comical quality to it which is weird because it is so dark in what the subject matter is but uh, you know, check it out and uh, and and really see Any for stars yourself in what it? this is all about I, I forgot what the name of the, the young lady promising young woman it. a promising young woman do they make like the, the you say there's like a little bit of a comedy bend to it does it make a really tough topic a little more palatable because they present it that way no it's ju it's like nothing you've ever seen this is what makes it great it, it is a movie that is not like any other movie it mm -hmm. is very very interesting it is different it's uh it's got a coen brothers vibe to it a little okay. bit but it's really really over the top and i love something original there's so much of a lack of originality in hollywood when you see a real original and uh, if you can find the uh, the lady, I'll try to find the lady during her Oscar name is State. Carrie Mulligan. Carrie Mulligan, yeah, very yeah. famous actress, very good okay. actress. Carrie Mulligan's fantastic in this, and it is something else. Check it out. And now, without further ado, let's get to Oscar's take, ladies Oscar's and gentlemen. Take. A review and comment on the news of the day, as only our Bolivian bloviator can do it. The views expressed by Oscar Santana in no way reflect the views of the Mike O'Mara Show, its listeners, or the right-thinking people of the United States. And now, without further ado, let's get to Oscar's take. Oscar's take. Oscar, the sports trading company Tops is turning Bernie Sanders' inauguration day meme into a baseball card. Or, or a collectible <laughs> card. Uh, he isn't playing a sport. He's just sitting in a chair trying to keep warm with his mittens. Uh, it's a limited edition card that will be available for $9.99. Please, I want it for Christmas next year. If you want one, you'll have to order yours by next Thursday. Uh, several other inauguration cards are available, including Lady Gaga and a young poet, Amanda Gorman. Uh, they're making baseball cards out of the inauguration. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I, I, look, I like the baseball card angle. Um, I would pay top dollar if I got a piece of his mittens. Embedded into the card, they do that with jerseys now. Oh yeah, like a thread. Right. Yeah, yeah, so I'll mm -hmm. take a thread of yarn into that card, and then uh, you got me. Where, where I think I'm, I'm truly leaning to, towards Mike, and they're on eBay now, is the Fauci bobblehead dolls of him throwing out the first pitch. Yes, there you go. Mm -hmm. Not yeah, Fauci bobblehead. Yeah, so yeah. I, I'd like that on my desk. That'd be fun. And he's back, and he's back, and he's, he's back. Let baby. him say whatever the heck he's he back, wants baby. to say. So yes. that's cool. Uh, you're listening to Oscar's take, everybody. Hey. Oscar's take. Oscar, the Miami Heat have added a new component to their COVID screening pro process, virus-sniffing dogs. <laughs> Supposedly, they can tell within 10 seconds if you have COVID-19 with an accuracy level of nearly 100%. How they did it, I do not know, but the Miami Heat have done that, uh, I guess, for the people that are in the bubble. I guess that's uh, how that's working. That's pretty amazing, guys. I think this is this isn't as shocking to me because I've seen enough uh, stories. Uh, it's human interest stories of dogs that can smell cancer or stories amazing. of yeah. uh, like 
even, and I'm not talking about trained dogs. I'm talking about just personal dogs. There was Regular a, dogs, A beautiful yeah. story of a, of a lab that kept on uh, sniffing at one of um, the owner's breasts, and he was getting, and it was just something that was kind of annoying to the owner for a little bit. Mm-hmm. And then she, she just, kept, he kept on sniffing, sniffing, sniffing. She went to have her, her annual mammogram, and she had cancer. Wow. Or she, and they caught it yeah. early and saved her life. But, you know, as far as the virus is concerned, if we could just figure out how much these tests cost per test and how much these dogs cost per dog. We might save money in the long run. We might not need the tests if we got dogs just sniffing at, you know, all uh, all the players' balls. Yeah, well, it doesn't change the fact that my uh, my uh, mailbox post out in the front of my house is made out of dog urine now. <laughs> uh, uh, you're listening to Oscar's take, ladies Oscar's and gentlemen. Nice coating. Yeah, Oscar, a member of the place. Oklahoma State House uh, named Justin Humphrey uh, just introduced a bill to create an official, it's legit, yeah, big Bigfoot hunting season. Uh, he <laughs> wants the he, it's legit. He wants the Oklahoma Wildlife Conservation Commission to quote set annual season dates and create any necessary specific hunting licenses and fees. The yeah. Wildlife Commission isn't hot on the idea. A spokesman said, "Here at the department, we use well, it's Oklahoma." Here at the department, we use science to make management decisions, and we do not recognize Bigfoot as a wildlife species. Uh, but but this, they, is, the, the, wants to do it. this is pure marketing, fellas. I, I, I could see a sign or a T-shirt or even a license that you'd buy for like 30 bucks uh, to make sure that you were, you were actually sanctioned and you had your license for Bigfoot. Yeah, I think mm-hmm. they should take it a step further and do what I think is – the most iconic of these type of uh, mythical creatures is the chupacabra. Because then yes. you've got like a cultural angle to it that really would open up to everybody that's interested. Chupacabra! Yeah, that'd be a, that, that's a winner. Bigfoot's kind of like, you know, passe. Chupacabra is what's hot now. I don't know. Chupacabra. What do you think about a, a license to get the Jersey Devil? <laughs> hey, hey, the Jersey Devil. Or the Bunnyman. Yes. Bunnyman. Bunny yeah, Man. Bunnyman Bridge. Exactly. Yeah, Bunnyman Bridge. Uh, you listen to Oscar's take, everybody. Oscar's this take. is. This is a story for you. I see these stories, and this is just something. Even though you're not a big wine drinker, you would perk up with this. American Airlines has figured out a way to get rid of the alcohol they haven't been able to sell on planes. They have created a new wine delivery service. You can order the bottles of wine that they serve to first-class passengers okay. for, thir- for 13 to $40 a bottle. I, uh, you know, you, it's kind of an investment opportunity. I ask you about what yeah. vintage is in first class. I have to ask that question. I've never, you know, I, I don't know if it's are they nice bottles. I don't know how that works. I know what it costs for a certain vintage. Well, I will tell you, the last time I was uh, flying in that part of the plane was uh, well over fifteen. <laughs> Years ago, so I wouldn't be able so to. So, wine that was bottled when Mike was in first class <laughs> is now vintage. <laughs> yeah. I don't, mind the, I don't mind the wine as much. I was into, and we might have had the story on the show here, where you could not just buy the wine that was in first class, you could, you could actually purchase the entire beverage cart of alcohol. Um, and it might have been Virgin Air or uh, Air France, where you would buy that entire cart at a lot of like a thousand. It was like maybe fourteen hundred dollars. But if you looked at it per bottle, you were getting a deal because what you were getting in that lot of the entire See? cart. Did I right? tell you he was the right guy to ask yeah. about this. That's the now. Way do you he actually does. get the cart too, or just the contents? You get the contents of the cart. Oh, but because they're size bottles. Is a, yeah, but, yeah, but they're oh, okay. stacked. They're right stacked. on. They're right absolutely on. size bottles. Yeah, yeah. You know, really. I mean, with my propensity for Grand Marnier too. You know, uh, I, I should have <laughs> taken advantage of that. Uh, but that's good. <laughs> yummy, yummy. I feel like yeah. a drink right now. Buy the cart, not the bottle. <laughs> cart. Very good. Uh, you're listening to uh, Oscar's take. Finally, Oscar. Oscar's take. From the New York Post, as COVID-19 cases skyrocket in California, the Los Angeles County Super Spreader Task Force is cracking down on underground parties featuring booze, strippers, and hundreds of revelers. Last Thursday night, uh, you know, it was uh, last Thursday night, Kaya Downing. Uh, no, 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 I'm sorry. Uh, the task force <laughs> broke up three parties resulting in 137 arrests and the recovery of a uh, discarded firearm. Put down the gun. Here come the cops. <laughs> Pictures of the underground uh, shindig show stripper poles in lounges full of uh, alcohol and a hookah. Yeah. Uh, so that's what's happening out uh, in L.A. I uh, guess they have to make a the, are these these, um, yeah. these parties are actually in, in most me- metropolitan uh, cities, uh, these underground parties. And yeah. 
look, I, I get it. Uh, you want to go out and you want to pretend like you, you know, the pandemic's not real or you want to take your chances. And even if you tested everybody, I, be, I, and I don't care about so much about the fine. I would love, Mike, for these people to be publicly shamed on some mm-hmm. sort of website uh-huh. that says these are the dullards that are making it difficult for us to keep this under control. So, yeah, like a COVID just, dummy website, yeah, coviddummy.com. Yeah, just, I would love I'm scared. It. I would love I'm that. scared of it in an enclosed room. You can show me all the Oreolas you want. If I'm in an enclosed <laughs> room, I, I am terrified. So uh, that's, uh, that's Oscar's take, ladies and gentlemen. We will come back with the uh, final audio vault of the week right here. Everybody, it's a quick <laughs> Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show. Uh, brought to you by, oh, I'm sorry. I always forget that. That's it's the fine. that's one of his early promos. I'm yes. sorry. Yeah. Uh, Oscar, do you know what a palindrome is? Oh, why don't I? Oh, is that uh, from uh, Dungeons and Dragons? No, it's I not. don't know. I don't know what a palindrome is. Uh, here's a hint. Look at today's date: one twenty-two twenty-one. Ooh, it's the same forward as it is backward. Oh, love it. Yeah, nice. palindrome. Nutty, sure. nutty. <laughs> uh, yeah, like the name Bob mm. or Step on No Pets. Jesus Christ. Uh, Abel was I, ere I saw Elba. Uh, are these all palindromes? These are famous example? palindromes, things that are backwards the same as they are forwards, yeah. Oh, here's a good one. A man, a plan, a canal, Panama. <laughs> That's the most famous of them all. God, what a load of crap. <laughs> here's the best palindrome ever. By the TMOS bonus show. Woes, sonob, sump, et, yub. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> it might not make sense, but it will make you uh, be entertained. Uh, cruise on over to MikeOmeraShow.com. Click the bonus banner. Bonus banner. TMOS bonus show, your passport to the export, and we'll uh, make you laugh front and back, guaranteed. And remember, Doc Note, I dissent. A fast never prevents a fatness. I diet on cod. Mm. That's backwards the same as it is forwards. Thank you very much. <laughs> he needs to see his PO. Uh, let's open up the, uh, the audio vault for today. This is oh, let me play it all the way. Clanker, there we go. All right, don't don't melt down at the end of the show. It's been so busy. Uh, Rob Spiewak, take it away. <laughs> Mike, I don't need to see my PO. I'm self medicating. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm fine. I'm fine. Right. So I thought that with COVID, we would be able to dodge uh, being shamed into buying Girl Scout cookies. A lot of times, and it, it doesn't happen at my podcast village because there's no one of that age. No, I got but a text. Say- I got a text from someone. It and I wasn't shamed into it, but I was like, oh, that's right. I got to pick this WJFK, up. we used to get shamed into it a yeah. lot. And uh, I got an email from my Uncle Dana's daughter, so I bought some cookies this year. But some girls are going high tech, and one girl did an actual website to sell cookies. Her pitch is pretty good. Hi, I'm Naomi, and I'm selling the most delicious cookies you'll buy this year. Are you tired of being stuck at home? Get yourself some fan favorite Finn Mints. <laughs> Were you disappointed by Wonder Woman 1984? <laughs> Make it better with Caramel Delights. Did you run out of things to watch on Netflix? Lemonades will cheer you up. Life is good, but it can be better. Buy yourself some Girl Scout cookies and make 2021 the sweetest year of all. Thank you. I love the it's, fact that she's throwing hate on Wonder Woman. Perf- so her sweet. Her diction's perfect. She was, you know, sometimes those kids, you see kids on feature films right. that are going, yeah, 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 but that Hate kid it. was terrific. Yeah, yeah. really. Uh, here's a kid that you won't like. And also remember, if you say something, know that a kid will probably repeat it. This was uh, trending yesterday on Instagram. This kid is, uh, shall we say, precocious because his folks just told him he was handsome. Do not call me handsome if you're not going to give me some that badonkadonk. <laughs> so don't let your kid request the badonkadonk, okay? That's not okay. That's so not so okay. the kid heard daddy I, to... Uh, I have to imagine daddy was talking this to daddy his talking to mommy, mommy, right? Yeah. Hopefully, and they Hopefully said, his uh, mommy. Well, it could be. Uh, and that yeah. brings to us to our next tape. Remember, we were talking about how I come from a broken home and yes. you said I was denied that I didn't get two Christmases as a kid. Right. Because right. my dad would come over. There's a trend on TikTok right now where people go on and they talk about things they did as children that they regret to this very day. And this guy tells this story. 
When I was in fifth grade, me and my friends were talking at recess about what we wanted for Christmas. One of the kids was like, well, yeah, I get two Christmases now because my parents got divorced last year. So my immediate thought was, wow, I want two Christmases. So after school that day, I went home, made a Mash.com account for my mom and left it up on my dad's work laptop. He checked oh. his email that night, found it, packed my mom's bags, and she went to a hotel room. And the next day, we had a family meeting with my brothers, and they told us they were getting a divorce. Seconds after they said that, I said it was me, and I said it was because I wanted two Christmases. My parents and my two older brothers did not look at me or talk to me for two months after. So there you go. That's something oh you can do. Oh, my God. Rotten the kid. evil, and he tells mm. it matter-of-factly. Mm. So but I here's the thing. Did you guys think the same thing I thought? Maybe I've been at the rodeo a couple of What's times. What's that? That if they if it was that fragile, right? Oh, they were, right. They were, they were it, having problems already. There had to be some yeah. other problems, right? Yeah, I agree. Uh, and why that. would the Match.com account be on his work computer? I think the story's fraught with error. But uh, still, he's a, a kid. Be, he's a kid. Yeah, and the guy sounds dullard enough that he made it up. He looked right? dullard, too. But anyway, yeah, okay. I think he did Beware it. Beware of that. I, we did a lot of radio. Deal, Maryland. I th <laughs> I think he did it. I just think he's stupid. Uh, okay. Mike, you know, changes are coming in our United States, and I love it. One of the things that has changed within the Oval Office is the decor. And you know what was removed yesterday? <laughs> this is a great story. Mm. Look, you can't do PR any better than this story. I know what you're no. going to talk about. They removed my Diet Coke button. <laughs> I had a red button on my desk that when I hit it, they would bring me a Diet Coke on a silver tray. Anyway, this is Trump. In 2017, showing off the Diet Coke button. Any other gadgets you've gotten installed here since you came? Well, everyone thinks that this is very ominous right here. See this? This is a very ominous looking because of the red button. <laughs> what does that get you when well, you press the Well, it gets you a button. Coke or it gets you a Pepsi. No, you be specific. It was a Diet Coke on a silver tray. For him. The, for him. Exactly. For exactly. Him. That's a, so that's no longer there. And they've replaced it. That goes out. A portrait of Benjamin Franklin comes in. I say we've traded up. What's, 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 what's creepier, uh, Matt Lauer or or that button? Like I just don't. I don't know. I, don't, I think it's a push. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Still with that door, you know. I'm sorry, I got to hit that. That's the only sound effect I have. Right, right. right. Matt Lauer saying, "Hey, that's great. Can I bring you? Come on in. So you're the new intern. That's wonderful. Uh, that's good. <laughs> Okay, okay. So and let's close with this. Everyone has goals during the pandemic. I think this lady is very, very forthright about fitness and the goal she wants to get to when she finishes out COVID-19. The first time I ever saw a personal trainer, she asked me to tell her my fitness goals. And I was like, Brittany, I'm going to be honest. I would like to have sex with the lights on. And she was like, can you get more specific? And I was like, and with another person. So let's <laughs> <laughs> sex with another person, lights on. Yeah, That's where we're go. headed. Funny. That's your magic audio vault. Have a great weekend, everybody. Have a wonderful weekend, everybody. We'll be back Monday with a brand new episode for Rob Spiewak and Oscar Santana. Mike O'Mara saying, so before I do that, I want to make sure we thank Kaya Downing. Kaya, Kaya Downing. Downing. You know, good luck with all those people that you deal with every day. Uh, you're doing a great work, and uh, you were fantastic. Talking Head, if you want to be a Talking Head, send your information to Rob with two Bs at MikeOmeraShow.com, and uh, you could be on that segment as well. We absolutely love talking once a week to a listener. It's spectacular. Uh, for Rob and Oscar, Mike O'Mara saying have a great weekend, and so long, everybody. Bye-bye. Ciao, ciao. Before you go, please make a mental note. Today's show was made possible by the TMOS bonus packages. You can secure yours right now by going to MikeOmeraShow.com and clicking on the red bonus banner. Buy it or give it. Either way, you're helping out TMOS, and that's a good thing. Thank you, and go in peace. Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. That's enough. Put down the mic. I need you to get my underwear out of my butt. <laughs> Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Pandemic.